Hi everyone, welcome to today's One Card Wonder Wednesday for April 3rd, 2019. I hope you all are having a great week. Um, I missed out on last week making a video because I was on vacation with my husband. So we went to Memphis, we had a great time. Um, I just want to say, just shout out to anyone who's watching who is from Memphis, your city is gorgeous. Um, we had a fabulous time there. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pull up my video here. Today we are using the Best Catch stamp set and I wanted to use this because I had a couple of requests for videos with some guy cards and that's not something I have done a lot of because a lot of times it's hard to find those stamp sets that have guy, you know, for guys or geared toward them. You could use this for a girl too if you wanted to. It's just, just what I'm trying to say is I wanted to make a guy card today. So I made an amazing card with this stamp set and I will show it to you now. And I used the um, You're the Best Catch Ever sentiment on the front. And as you can see, this is a pocket card. So the inside, you're gonna have this little piece that pulls out and that's what you're gonna write your sentiment on. So let's get started. I will just set this to the side so you can see it while I'm working on it. I'll just put it right here on the left. Um, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna cut a piece of cardstock. This I use Mossy Metal for this card. Um, and it's going to be five and a half by eight and a quarter. So basically cut a sheet of cardstock in half. And then I used the Stampin' Trimmer and I used the scoring blade on it. Hang on, one of my feet are up here. I need to move that out or something so it's out of my way. Okay, so we're going to score with this. You can use your scoring board if you want to, but I like using this because... For me, this is just more convenient to get this out because I can cut, I can score with it all at the same time. It's a very versatile tool. So the first score line that we're going to do is going to be at two and a quarter. And so you're just gonna line your paper up right there at two and a quarter and you'll use the score blade, which is the lighter color blade. This darker blade is your cutting blade. And you're just gonna go ahead and score there, and then you're gonna go right to the tippy end, almost to the very end of your board here, but this is your six and one quarter mark. So, I mean, I really didn't have to put this out, but because it just makes it easier for balancing that I went ahead and put it out. So you're just gonna get those two score lines. Those are the only things you have to score for this card. The next thing you'll do is take some tear and tape, and with your tear and tape, just go along the bottom and I just do one strip from that two and that first score mark right over to your second score mark. And then of course it says tear and tape, but I have a hard time tearing it, so I just go ahead and use my scissors for it. And then take one side, it doesn't matter, it can be either this one or that one, and just go along the whole edge because you're gonna fold that over and that's what's going to seal the back of your, your your pocket shut. So go ahead and fold one side in and get your foam folder, which I'm looking for mine right now because I thought it was on my table. Let me grab one. Just go ahead and use your bone folder to make it nice and crisp because that'll give it, keep it down like this. And then go ahead and do the same with this side. And so I know I'm always saying this, but it's just something that helps keep me in your newsfeed and keep my videos popping up. Not to, for people who don't wanna watch them, but for those who do wanna watch it. Um, so go ahead and comment on my video or give it some hearts and some likes when you watch it, even if it's not when you're watching it live. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, make sure you ask them because I will be happy to answer them. So now that you've peeled that second one off, go ahead and fold this side over and now you have your pocket. So the one thing I did on the front of this one is I cut a little tab out, as you can see right here. So to do that, I just used the half inch punch. You can use um, any other kind of punch or you can run it through with um, a die before you fold it. But I just went just a little bit lower than, a little more than half of the circle basically is what I'm trying to say and try to get it as centered as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect. But just go ahead and that half inch punch makes a cute little tab in there. Hi Lisa Marie, how are you? So once you have that done, 
You can just set that piece aside for now because we're not gonna be using it for a few minutes. And you can grab a piece of Whisper White cardstock and this is cut three and a half, let me make sure, three and a half by four and three quarters because I had, to, I had to go back and recalculate some of my measurements on this after I started it. Because once I cut that little tab in there, I didn't wanna have to cut tabs in this and in the smoky slate as well. I just wanted to do just on the mossy meadow. So basically, the first thing that you're gonna do is take the fish out of that best catch stamp, which I love how it's jumping out, um, and use some memento ink, and you're gonna stamp it a couple of times on here. Probably, I did three, and we're gonna do actually a masking technique. So I just did one on the bottom, and then ink it up again, and then I did one toward this side but I want another one here, but I don't want them, I don't want to stamp right over top of that fish. So what you do is you take a post-it note and make sure you have your sticky side. You want to get some of your image on that part that's sticky. I mean, the sticky side is the other side is basically what I'm saying, but you're going to want to stamp it on here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to cut this out and then the head of your fish is going to be sticky so you can use that sticky portion is what I'm trying to get through and it's not coming out right. So I already did one earlier and what I did was when I did it I went ahead and cut through twice. So basically you don't it's not stamped on this one but you have two of them. So basically take this fish and place it right over top of the fish that you just stamped. So now you looks like you have a yellow fish on there. Hi Donna how are you? And then ink your stamp back up again and now because I want it to go over this fish and I want it just a little bit higher, I just stamp right over top of that. And then when you peel that post-it note off, it looks like you have the two, one fish is behind and one fish is in the front. Isn't that cool? I love that technique. And I like to show that technique just so people can get a chance to do something a little bit different with their cards. And if you do like I did and you cut out more than one at a time, you just stick these right inside your stamp case and you'll have them for the next time. And if one loses its stickiness, you have another. So there you go, that's my tip for that. Now for these fish, the only thing I wanna do with them is I wanna color them with the Old Olive Stampin' Blend. So quickly, I just went through and actually I'm gonna use the other, the writing tip on this because I just wanna outline them first just to make sure I don't go outside of those edges because I'm not cutting these ones out. And because these two fish are overlapping, you don't have to outline the entire fish's mouth there. Just outline whatever edge is gonna be the, outline, the outside part of where you're coloring. And because I was making this card for someone that you love, and it says you are the best catch, I wanted these other fish that are in the background just to be a solid color because the person who is your best catch stands out to you. So that's why the other fish has a little more color and pizzazz. And so here we go back around this. Um, Lisa Marie or Donna, have you ever used this stamp set? Do you like it? Would you recommend it to anyone? I always like to ask questions like that because I want to know what people are thinking and if this is something they would have bought or have used or would want to use. And then since we're just using the one color here, just real quick, now that you've got it outlined, it makes it easier because you don't, you can see, make sure you don't go over the edge, just go to that green line that you where you outlined it and just color it in. I do see a couple of spots where it did go out just a little bit when I outlined, but that's okay because it's gonna be covered by our vellum water that we're gonna add on to that in, in a little while. All right, here we go, get this colored in. And this fish, you can just go right off the edge because he's only partially on there anyway. Okay, while I still have the memento ink out, I wanna go ahead and these little bubbles and just add a couple of little bubbles. I want this one to kind of look like it's coming up from the fish and these are coming from their movements in the water and swimming and whatnot. 
get to go ahead and get those done and I'm gonna set the memento ink aside for a minute Oh, actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to just set my paper aside, keep my memento ink out, because I want to go ahead and stamp the fish one more time on a separate sheet of paper, because you're going to fussy cut him out when you get to him or her. It depends on who you're making your card for. And also, I'm going to go ahead and just quickly stamp the inside as well, because that way it's all done at once and I won't have to get the memento ink out again. And I just use the fishing lure for the inside because I just love that fishing lure and I wanted to include it in the card somewhere. So I thought the inside would be perfect. And as you can see, we'll color that in as well. So go ahead and get my memento ink set aside. And we'll start with the Stampin' Blends. And I use several different colors for this fish. And I'm finished with the old olive. I only use the old olive on this fish alone. But on this fish here, I went ahead and I did some Mango Melody. And if you wanna go outside the lines while you're coloring this to make sure you get the color everywhere that you want, that's fine, cause you're gonna cut them out anyway. I went ahead and did some Mango Melody on the belly. And then I went to the Poppy Parade. And with the Poppy Parade, I did a little bit on the fins, on the edge of the fins, all of them, even on his tail fins because I just thought he needed a little bit of that pizzazz on his tail fins as well. And then I went ahead and did all these little spots that he has on his back area. And there's a couple here. We'll go ahead and get those today too. Hi Fran, how are you? Um, get that on there. And then I took the Mango Melody and I colored around his eye area. And just, a, I did a little bit like this, but then before I really blended, I went ahead and took the Mossy Meadow and just went over the entire fish. And like I said, you can go out of the line, so just go ahead and quickly go over the whole fish because you're gonna cut them out, so it doesn't matter. And you can see that kind of made that Mango Melody kind of faded away. Hi, Rana, how are you? But now you take that brush tip and just kind of go over that Poppy Parade and over that Mango Melody again. And oh my goodness, it just starts to pop. That Mango Melody color comes right through and it starts to pop again. And I did the same on these fins up here. And I guess I missed this fin here for the Poppy Parade. So we'll just add that in right now. And we'll go over that with the Mango Melody. And it kind of makes it blend in. Hi, Angie. Um, and then because I had the Mango Melody down here, I just kind of did just a little strip of the Poppy Parade. And then I went back through with that Mango Melody again because I the way it comes through is just so pretty that I couldn't not do it. I had to put it on there. Um, yes, I will post all the colors, Rana, and I haven't even listed all of them yet because I'm still using them. Hi, Lois. How are you? So then take your writing tip. I know I go from one subject to the other, and I just kind of went over top of those dots again that were Poppy Parade because something about that Mango Melody mixed with that Poppy Parade, it just kind of makes it stand out and makes it just a little bit brighter on that fish. So once you have your fish done, you're just gonna fussy cut it out, which there are also dyes. I don't have the dyes, so that's why I went ahead and did the fussy cutting, but I have one ready. You can see this is the one I colored earlier, and I'm just gonna set him aside for now. And I wanna show you what I did with the pieces of vellum. Now the vellum I cut three and a half inch wide, and then this one's two inches, and this one's one inch. So all I did was I took I need to get some of these out of my way so I don't get color on them. Um, my Balmy Blue Light Stampin' Blend. And because I wanted it to look like water, I didn't just want it to be um, the white vellum. I just went ahead and took that Balmy Blue and just scribbled all over the top of that vellum to give it a blue color. And you could use a darker color if you wanted. I thought, you know, we use color vellum for other things. Why not use it to just color a big piece? to make it water. I was like, we don't have balmy blue vellum, so let's just make some. 
and it just takes a few seconds for it to dry. If you just fan it a little bit, it dries pretty quick. Oh, thank you, Ron. I appreciate that. I love to color, so that's a very nice compliment for me. So now, as you can see, this water that I did on the card is all jagged. So all I did was, after it dried, I just took those pieces and I just ripped them. And you can rip them however big or small you want for those waves on the water. Or you can make them calmer and not have the waves, but I kind of liked it with the waves. So there we go. Now we have our water for our card. And everybody always wants to know how to attach vellum without being able to see what you're attaching. There, I believe there are some companies that make vellum tape. We don't sell vellum tape with Stampin' Up, so I just use glue dots. And with this being colored, it really is not super noticeable where you have the glue dots, but once you get them stuck down to your whisper white paper here, I mean, yes, you can see them, but they're not horribly visible. It's not like blaring through at you. Oh my gosh, she used glue dots. But then take your second piece and I went ahead and just put two on each of those two. One at the bottom, one at the top of the, the little wave areas. And then I just affixed this right over top of the second one. I thought about making it a little more layered and putting dimensionals, but those really do show up behind the vellum. So I thought, now nah, I'll just use the glue dots. And as you can see, it's, I mean, you know they're there, but it's not super bling in my face glue dots. Okay, so the next step was I used some of the linen thread that carried over from the holiday catalog. Now this is not in the annual catalog, so if you want it, you have to look it up online on the website. And I went ahead and I just left brought it across, left enough because I'm going to tie a knot. And I want this to go around so I have three strips across the front. And they can be, you can crisscross them, you can make them straight, however you want to do it. And then once you get those wrapped around, just cut it off. And what I did next was the trick I always do with when I have ribbon like this where I've put it across, is just take a piece of scotch tape and tape it down because that way it's gonna stay where you want it. And when you're tying it, it's not moving all over the place. And it also makes it easier once it's tied for it to stay right where you want it. So I'm gonna flip it this way just to tie my knot. I thought about doing a bow, but I was like, no, this is kind of a manly card. So I guess I'll just put the knot in there. So my next question, and I did ask this earlier, but I'm not sure if um, anyone answered it because sometimes I don't see all the comments and I apologize for that but I get so busy with this is I was wondering if anyone has this set and if they've used it yet or if they've been waiting for some fun ideas and maybe this is the idea they're gonna try okay once you get that tied and here's what I'm doing here now that I've already done it is take your take your pick tool and just kind of pick through that thread because the way it is braided, it will come apart and then it leaves you with that fluffiness, which I think reminds me of fishing because of fishing flies have the, always have the feathers and the different things on them. Hi Lisa, how are you? I see someone else has joined us, that's exciting. All right, so now you have that tied. We already have our extra fish cover colored. And we're gonna wanna attach this to the piece of smoky slate, which is just a little bit bigger than the whisper white that we cut at three and a half by four and three quarters. So our smoky slate is three and three quarters by five. And I just used my um, snail adhesive. You could use Tombow, you could use whatever you've got. You could even use glue dots, or dimensionals, I mean, or glue dots. Um, the dimensionals would obviously raise it up, which we all know I like to do too, and I did use them, but just for this smaller piece. And I'm going to go ahead and adhere that on. And we've got our fish, and I'm gonna go ahead and 
put a couple of dimensionals on the back of him. I just used the regular size ones on him. You could use small ones if you wanted. You're in the minis. But I just figured two of the large ones. And I wanted him because... He stands out because of his color, but I wanted him jumping a little bit higher than the other fish, so I just kind of put him up just a little bit. And we're gonna set that piece aside, and I have one of these little um, stitched, rec stitched rectangles, if I could get the words out of my mouth, that I cut using the stitched rectangles um, thinlets. And I use the You're the Best Catch Ever sentiment from the best catch stamp set and it fits so perfectly on this one tiny little rectangle and this is one of the ones in that set that is just kind of off by itself it doesn't actually layer onto the other ones which I thought was why I liked it because it's the perfect one it's a loner it's the best catch right don't you think I know I have a weird sense of humor sorry <laughs> So now I will take some mini dimensionals and I'm not even going to put them on the back of this yet. I'm just going to put them right at the bottom of this braided linen thread there. And I'm going to go ahead and peel the adhesive back off from them. And then you can use a couple small ones again up here at the top and do the same thing. Or you can use a big one. I mean, it doesn't matter. The only reason I wanted two at the bottom was because I was trying to, even though I taped the linen thread on the back. I just wanted to make sure it didn't move back and forth or the linen. What is it called? It's not linen thread, but it's braided linen trim. I apologize. Braided linen trim. And that's what you'd have to look for online if you wanted to get it because it's not in the current catalog. It is something that has carried over. And once you have that together, the next step is to just use, again, either your Tombow or your snail or dimensionals, whatever you want to connect it with or adhere it with to the front of the pocket card that we've made and you're just going to attach that right to the front and you're going to come just a little bit below that little tab that we made and just get that attached on there and now before I move any further and we all I did I'm going to color this for the center but I wanted to show you that I used, it's hard to see on the camera, but I went ahead and used some Wink of Stella and I colored that entire fish. Just the top, just this multicolored one that we put on the top because that's our best catch. That's representing our best catch. And so we want the other fish to be plain Jane and this one to be fabulous and sparkly and fish, their scales kind of sparkle. So that's why you want that fish to look like that anyway. Hi Sharon, thanks for joining us. So now the next thing I did with it, and like I said, that's hard to see too, is I literally just went on the very edge of the little vellum waves that we made. And I just went ahead and just did a strip right at the top of those vellum sheets. And why I didn't do it before I put the card together, I don't know, because this is how I did it earlier, too. You could put it on there before you put the cards together or put the waves on there. But I just thought I'll just do all the Wink of Stella at one time. So that's why I did it that way. And once you have that done, you just take, you're going to take your little piece for the inside and you're going to use your Stampin' Blends again. And I used Crumb Cake this time. And I just did this little... I don't even know what you call this part of your fishing fly that goes on your hook, but I colored that part with crumb cake. And then I used, again, some of the Poppy Parade. I'm gonna pull this out just so you can see how I had that other finished. And I went ahead and just colored all these little feathers with the Poppy Parade. And I just went outside of the line on that one, so I may have to get my color, my color lifter and show you how that works. I'm gonna do that real quick now. Sometimes the the color lifter is this white one, but it just kind of takes some of that color off where you've gone outside of the line. And on this, it's not too horrible where I went out just because this is a fishing fly. And like I said, when, when I did the ends of that braided linen trim and made them fuzzy, fishing flies are kind of like that. So it's not a huge deal if you go out of the lines a little bit. 
And then I just, this little part here that's supposed to look like the mosquito, I think, or the bug, I just did with the Mango Melody. But then I took that Mango Melody and just went inside this down the center of this big feather. And it just gives it a nice little pop. I love these two colors together, the Mango Melody and the Poppy Parade. They just work fabulous together. So we have that little piece done. And now we wanna make this little tab here, this little Poppy Parade tab that goes on the top of the card insert. Super easy. All you're gonna do is you're gonna take, I took a piece, a half inch strip of Poppy Parade cardstock, and I put it in the triple banner punch and bring it all the way, make sure you poke it all the way to the end because that way you know you're even. And then now you've got that little, that little flag on there. Go ahead and go all the way back down to the end again and make sure it's in the center or as close to center as you can get it because sometimes it doesn't actually work out the way you plan. Punch it out again. So here's what you get. You get this awesome little tab, right? Isn't that cute? And we want that for the top of our little card here. So we're gonna take a piece of Mossy Meadow and it's just, again, a little bit bigger than this. And it is three and three quarters by five and one quarter. And this piece of Whisper White is three and a half by five. So we're just gonna layer those. Again, I'm using my snail, but you could use combo or whatever you want to adhere the two together. And this is the piece that you're gonna write your little sentiment on for whoever you're giving this to. So I'm not gonna put this little arrow flag, whatever you wanna call it, on there yet. I wanna take a piece of the braided linen trim and I'm not even gonna measure, I'm just gonna take, because I'm gonna end up cutting it off. So I'm just gonna loop a little bit and cut it. But I want to make a knot, and I want it at this end, the end that has the loop, because that's gonna be attached to your card. So you gotta make it at least big enough so you can make yourself a knot. But I didn't wanna make it too long because I don't wanna waste too much of it. This linen trim is fantastic. Okay, so now you've got that little knot right there. You're gonna take that, and I know this is kind of, you look at it and you're going, this is backwards, why is she putting that on before she puts this on? But it works perfect, I promise. And then I just have a, this is one by Tim Holtz, Stampin' Up used to sell them, but they don't anymore. This little tiny stapler, and I'm just gonna staple it to hold that trim on there. Once you get that on there, you can take your little arrow piece, put a little bit of adhesive on it, and just slide it under. And then it's in the exact perfect place. You don't have to worry about getting the staple over the top of it. I put it on there a little bit crooked, but that's all right, it's still cute. And I wanna cut just a little bit of that off. And then we're gonna go ahead and use the, you can either use your take your pick tool or your paper piercing tool and just go ahead and fray those ends again. Just go ahead and, Start at the tip and work your way down and it will just unbraid all of that and you will have that fantastic frayed edge right there. You take that piece, it slides perfectly into your pocket card. Look, beautiful. It's a fantastic card. You can use any stamp set to make this, whatever you want. I just wanted to make a guy card today. I hope you enjoyed it. I will list the dimensions for all the pieces that I cut so you know what they are. And I will list the colors that I use as Rana has suggested. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great rest of your evening. And if you want to share the video, that would be fantastic. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Have a great night. Bye.